Associate Director of Alumni Career Services. Nicole Waite is Employment Specialist at UK Steps Temporary Engagement and Employment. And Suzanne Smith and Sunny Saylor are with the Fayette County Co Cooperative Extension Office. Um, and they are also uh, very, very important to the production of, of Job Club. We always want to remind um, our audience that Job Club is currently hosted in a hybrid format. And that means that you could attend in person here at the Fayette County Extension Office. Um, we are welcome to do that. We have great networking that uh, um, it precedes and, and follows each session. We also are available on Zoom webinar, and we have a chat moderator available for that format. So you can uh, tell us where you are, for instance. We'd love to know where you're checking in from today. So you can put that in the chat box right now. Uh, remember to toggle to everyone um, um, out of, in, in the chat box so we can all see that. And um, we also will be able to uh, review and uh, share your questions with our speaker. So that's a, a great uh, resource for that. And then thirdly, we are available on Facebook Live, and that is a view only. We do not have a chat moderator or the job lead newsletter, which follows those that is available to those that register through our Zoom uh, opportunity. We want to um, also review, remind you that we have a free job club resource packet. And you could go to our website at www.uklumni.net slash job club, and you will see a whole array of resources there for you to use um, at any, any point of your job search. Uh, job search uh, um, facts and answers and, and quest to questions. We have Central uh, Kentucky and the state of Kentucky actually networking opportunities informational interview tips. I mean, the list goes on and on. And we want you to be aware of that because we, uh, you, may, you, may, you may need us in the, uh, in the times between we meet on those second and fourth Tuesdays. We want you to have access to that, uh, those resources and information. It is also very important that you join the Central Kentucky Job Club sharing community on LinkedIn. Uh, we'll be talking a lot about LinkedIn today, and this is one um, particular um, place that you can join. And it will, we will be giving articles, we will give some job leads that we get before we're going to be able to share them in two weeks with you. And so it's just a great place for you to introduce yourself and to remain active on at that location. Employers and recruiters are always welcome at Job Club. And uh, if you come in person, we offer the opportunity for you to have a one minute spotlight to share your active job lead. Uh, if you're joining us uh, virtually, we offer that same opportunity. So we will uh, look for your hand up and uh, let you to do that at the conclusion of our presentation. Uh, remember to watch for um, later today for your email, and that's going to include job leads that have been sent and shared with the job club team. Some attendees are connect, conducting a confidential job search. So let's please be respectful of the privacy of the job search of others. And you can check out our job search related articles. Um, they're included in that job club reminder email. And most importantly, and we get this question often, we do have recordings and they and in PowerPoint slides of past presentations. So they are available at uh, on our website, uh, net slash job club, that same website. So be sure and check those out as well per topic. So this is always a really um rewarding time for the job club team, and that's to share success stories. We are thrilled, and um, as usual, we have, we have one to share today. But before I do that, I'd love for um, those of you virtually or in our audience to share any job success, job search success, that you may have um, achieved in the last couple of weeks or months. Now, that doesn't mean that you have landed a job necessarily. It means that you have um, networked with someone from the past 
You may have revised your resume. You may have joined LinkedIn. Um, you may have checked out our website, for instance, and, and looked for, for additional information. So let's take a, a moment and say that we could, uh, if you could share that, we would love to hear from you in the chat box what you might have, um, have achieved. So go ahead and put those in the, in the, in the chat box. Um, it really is, it, it's meaningful to those that are attending that may not have considered what you might have uh, accomplished as a success, but it is all toward the, um, it's all toward the, the process. Okay. So the one I want to share today is uh, really thrills us. Um, it begins with, I wanted to share my success story in March, 2021. We all, we all know that about a year ago, I left my chosen career after 26 years. I knew what kind of work I wanted and there were plenty of opportunities. So I started sending applications and I started attending job club online and eventually in person. As the hunt dragged on, opportunities continued to show up, but interviews were rare. I had two in the first six months, but no offers. I kept honing my approach and my documents. After each job club meeting, I had something new to try or something I needed to tweak. I think the thing that helped me the most was a mock interview after one of those meetings. That feedback, which included confirmation of what worked and suggestions on how to tell my story in a better way. It all paid off in December when I was called on an interview for a new job with the Legislative Research Commission in Frankfurt, where I could use my skills. I made it through the interview with no surprises. I had a solid answer for every question, and I didn't feel caught off guard by anything they asked. I left feeling good, and they said they would make a decision quickly. Within a week, they called with an offer for a temporary job for the legislative session. I accepted with hopes of it becoming a more permanent position, or at least opening the door for something else. Within three days, left in the temporary job, they called with an offer for a permanent position doing the same work. I accepted and officially started on Monday. It's such a relief to finally be settled in a job that I enjoy and can use my experience while learning new skills. Thank you to Job Club for helping me learn and the encouragement to keep working, keep refining, and keep improving. Fred Pecky. We just couldn't be more excited about him uh, and his success. And um, we're just, uh, again, we will be more than thrilled to learn of your success. And we know that that will be forthcoming. Uh, just stay with it and uh, stay, stay on board with Job Club. All right, it is now time for our presentation. And uh, let me do a brief introduction. We're just so excited to have um, Monica Williamson with us today. She's from Valvoline. And a little bit about her background. She's originally from Florida, a graduate of the University of Florida. She started her career by marketing in, in marketing by working for Gap Incorporated, headquartered in San Francisco, and Lowe's Home Improvement in Charlotte, North Carolina before moving into talent acquisition. Monica has been with Babylon for two and a half years and involved in corporate recruiting since 2008. She and her husband spend their free time watching their two boys, Gray and Luke, play all the things sports, which currently is baseball. She also enjoys cheering on her own Carolina Panthers. We're not gonna hold that against her at from UK, but we certainly welcome you, Monica. Welcome to Job Club. Thank you. Thank you for that warm introduction. Happy to be here. Okay. So, let's see. My name is Monica Williamson, and I'm going to kind of give you um, a high level overview just about Valvoline, and then we'll dive right into LinkedIn um, and then give some interview tips as well. Um, this just kind of gives a snapshot of a few of the companies that I've worked for um, in my past life. Um, and I've been with Valvoline 
two and a half years. We moved to Kentucky right before COVID hit, and I shortly joined Valvoline right before COVID. Um, so Valvoline, we are our worldwide headquarters, our headquartered here in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, so I'm just going to show you a quick video just to kind of give you a snapshot um, of what we do over at Valvoline. If I can work the technology. Let's see. Amanda, I may need to. Oh, yeah. Sorry. No, you're doing great. That was good. Sorry, I might have just been able to Sorry. You are perfect. All right, did that video work? Well, all right, we'll keep moving forward. All right, so here's, this is Valvoline's headquarters. We're off of um, Manowar Boulevard um, or Manowar Road. Um, we actually, um, we split off from Ashland Oil in 2016 and moved our headquarters down from Ashland, Kentucky to Lexington, Kentucky. Um, we've got probably 600 folks that used to work out of the headquarters building prior to COVID. Um, so that's just kind of a snapshot of our headquarters. Sorry. We're top three premium motor brand oil. We're best in class. Um, in 2016, we actually uh, went public. So that was a big um, milestone for Valvoline. We were founded in 1866. And Sam Mitchell is our CEO at Valvoline. And he actually just celebrated 25 years with the company. Um, so our first motor oil was actually invented in 1866 by Dr. John Ellis. And as you can see, this is kind of a snapshot how we've continued to innovate over the years um, and just continue to enhance our products. This gives you a nice overview of where we are in the world. We distribute our, our products globally in, under, in over 140 countries. We've got presence in North America, Latin America, um, Europe, mid, uh, Australia, and India. So Valvoline's got two core um, business segments. We refer to our retail services side of the business and our global products side of the business. Um, our retail services is our Valvoline Instant Oil Change Service Centers. I'm sure a lot of you have probably gotten your oil changed with us. Um, we've got over 1,600 company-owned um, and franchise-owned service centers throughout North America. And then our global product side of the business um, encompasses our North America business and our international business. Um, so under our, our core North America segment, we essentially sell our lubricants and automotive products through two channels, the do-it-yourself channel and the do-it-for-me channel. I fall under the do it for me channel. I go get my, my oil changed um, at our service centers, but we do have a do it yourself where we distribute our products at the Walmarts of the world, AutoZones, um, and Amazons. And then our retail services side of the business just continues to keep growing. Actually, this says we're now up to 1,800 company owned and franchise service centers. And we've got two different channels there. We've got our own that we own, and then we've got an express care platform where independent operators can buy our products and display our brands and operate on their own. 
So working at Valvoline, this slide kind of gives you a snapshot. We've got over 10,000 employees globally around the world. Um, and these are kind of our, our core channels as far as um, bucketed and, and where people work. So global products, retail services, supply chain, technology, and R&D, and corporate services. And you can see the various departments that kind of fall under each segment. Um, I'm a corporate recruiter. We're a team of six at Valvoline. Um, I personally help staff our marketing department and then a lot of the corporate services groups, so our legal, finance, HR, um, and IT. We actually just hired a dedicated IT recruiter, so I don't have to support IT anymore. Um, but we're pretty lean and mean, and we've got um, you know a lot of opportunities right now. If you visit our career site, we're hiring like crazy. We're in kind of that growth mode. Um, so lots of opportunities at Valvoline right now. You know, we pride ourselves um, on our culture. You know, our core values, it really all starts with our people. We do strive to really take care of our people, um, you know, celebrate successes. And you'll hear the word, you know, we're, we're, a, we're a family, if you will. Our vow is to bring hands-on expertise for the benefit of our customers every day, moving the business forward with speed and excellence. Um, part of um, a little bit of an incentive at Valvoline, you can nominate your fellow employees for a, a hands-on coin award. Um, so it just helps kind of foster a positive um, collaborative culture. Um, I will say it's one of the special things about Valvoline is just our unique and special culture. People are generally kind and happy and it shows. Um, and our vision, we are building the world's leading, eng leading engine in automotive maintenance business. So um, our ticker on, on the stock market is the three Vs, and that's what those stand for. So we really pride ourselves um, on the original candidate experience at Valvoline. You know, right now, it's definitely a candidate's market. Um, you know, we've got six recruiters that are actively you know, reviewing that career site every day and reviewing resumes and talking to candidates. Um, you know, I've got certain jobs that have over 300 applicants and it, it is physically hard sometimes to physically call every applicant that applies to our applicant tracking system, but we really do try to, um, you know, connect and, and move candidates through our, our ATS system in a high, in a, a fast manner. You know, if you're selected to um, move forward in the process and you meet the qualifications of a job, you know, the first step is always the recruiter reaching out to the candidate, doing an initial phone screen. Um, you know, part of my role is to kind of submit a diverse slate of candidates to the hiring manager for consideration. Um, and then once the, can once the hiring manager reviews the candidates, then they typically do a first round interview, and then we'll do a second round interview where we kind of narrow down um, our candidate pool to maybe our top two or three candidates, and then they meet with a broader interview panel team. Um, and then after that, we all come together and debrief um, and hopefully make an offer, make a selection. So that's kind of highlights just our, our candidate journey. Um, you know, some of the things we try just to kind of help prep candidates for, you know, as you start your job search, um, you know, definitely review your resume, make sure it's updated, you know, focus on your successes and accomplishments, try to, you know, keep them concise, but highlight them so that, you know, the recruiter is looking at many resumes every day. So you want it to kind of be concise um, and just get to the point. Make sure your LinkedIn profile is updated. Um, you know, really kind of sit down and think about companies that you want to work for. So, you know, brainstorm what types of companies um, you want to work for. You know, nowadays, so many companies are open to remote opportunities. So I think it opens up your, um, your list. You know, review your strengths and weaknesses. I will tell you, you know, I, I don't come out and ask candidates, tell me about your strengths, tell me about your weaknesses. Um, but I do articulate a question where I strive to kind of get a sense of the virtues of a candidate. And so I, I, I typically ask, you know, 
if I were to ask some of your past peers or managers what they would say about working with you, what do you think they'd say? And it helps me kind of get a sense of their strengths, um, but also shows kind of if, you know, if they're a team player, if they're humble. Um, so I don't really use that. Tell me about your strengths, but, but that's kind of how I craft that question. Um, and then start networking. I mean, your network, that's how you, that's how you find opportunities, the people you know, or the people they know. Um, and then another thing to just think about, think ahead about references. We do conduct reference checks at Valvoline. Um, and oftentimes that's the step prior to a job offer. So ensure that, you know, your references are aware that you're going to be using them as references, um, you know, make sure that the references will give you a positive reference, you know. Um, so those are just some tips just in terms of before you start your job search. So LinkedIn, the good part. So we use LinkedIn. I use LinkedIn daily. This is, you know, where I go to really attract talent and go after, you know, not only those active job seekers, but those passive job seekers too. Um, so did you know, so here's some fun facts about LinkedIn. Um, Microsoft paid $26.2 billion to buy LinkedIn. LinkedIn is rated as the most trusted social media platform. LinkedIn turns 20 years old in 2023. I actually can't believe that. Um, you are seven times more likely to be found if you have a profile picture on LinkedIn. Now, as a recruiter, I still reach out to people even if they don't have a profile picture, but that is a good fact to know. Um, the average income of a LinkedIn user currently stands at about $46,644 a year. There are six people hired every minute on LinkedIn. LinkedIn ads can potentially reach 13% of the world's population. And a complete LinkedIn profile will get you 21 times more profile views and 36 times more messages. So who's using LinkedIn? So according to LinkedIn, they sent us these facts. Um, there are a total of 810 million LinkedIn users right now, and 77% of them are outside of the US. Um, and you can see 57 million companies, over 150 various industries, um, 120 plus college and university alumni groups, um, you know, open jobs, there's 15 million open jobs posted. Um, you know, Fortune 500 companies are heavily using LinkedIn, um, and then 20% of the millennials are now um, in the workforce and essentially utilizing LinkedIn. Um, so rock your profile. This is a picture of my boss. She has a good profile. Um, you can see she's used kind of a, a, a professional headshot. She's got a cool image of her company in the background. Um, you know, what I like about her profile is it's just, it's clean, it's concise. Um, you know, that there, there's a fact that you're 14, you're 14 times more likely to be viewed if you have a photo. Um, you know, if you want to draft a compelling summary, they, they suggest 40 words or more. Um, really kind of focus on your career accomplishments, um, detail your past work experience, 12 times, you're 12 times more likely to be viewed if you have more than one position listed. Now, if you're a recent college grad and you really don't have any work in experience, you know, that's where you can highlight your volunteer experience or any internships that you've had um, or any causes that you're a part of. Um, you know, anything that you can help just in terms of grabbing somebody's attention um, and showing kind of what your passions and values are. You know, she leverages her profile to obviously attract talent to Valvoline, um, but I just think she, she does it in a nice, clear and concise way. Okay, so how to network. So LinkedIn, I, you know, my husband's actually looking for a job right now and he's on LinkedIn every day. I mean, it's honestly one of the best resources as you begin your search. Um, you know, so 
you're more experienced than you think, use your inbox, get personal, join the in crowd, um, you know, update your status early and often, um, you know, do your homework. I feel like it's such a great platform just to research companies um, and you can kind of go through and see people you may know. Um, just, I mean, you can fall down a rabbit hole in LinkedIn and just spend endless hours just kind of reading articles, um, you know, building connections with people, um, you know, think broadly about all of your experience. Um, you know, networking doesn't mean reaching out to cold strangers. Start building your LinkedIn network, network by uploading your address book. And so you can connect with people just in your own um, network and then start connecting to people, you know, you know and trust, and then you can start connecting with people they know. Um, you know, as you build your connections, customize your requests with a friendly note. Um, if necessary, a reminder of where you met or who you met through or what organization you have in common. I receive a lot of connection requests on a daily basis and there's no, no sentences, there's nothing, it's just asking me to request. I always value, you know, if they put a blurb, hey, Monica, I, I'm, I'm, I noticed you're posting about this job, here's my resume. I mean, the more content you can put in that first request, that will get me to look at your resume for sure. Um, so don't just send those kind of generic, you know, requests. Um, it's almost like a friend request. Put, put a little more personal touch in there. Um, you know, the other thing to utilize is just um, leverage your alumni groups, you know, all, most universities all have alumni sites, um, you know, reach out to other alumni. They, alumni love to help one another. So use those connections. Um, let's see, you know, uh, oh, another thing, as people update their statuses, engage in your, in your network statuses, congratulate people when they get, you know, job offers and um, you'll start to see more engagement organically. Um, the other thing you could do is leverage LinkedIn just to try to ask to do uh, informational interviews. You know, people will reach out and just say, you know, I'm exploring opportunities outside of my company. Um, I would love to set up, you know, a, a, a informational interview. Um, so that's an idea as far as um, outreach. Um, so let's see. So as you start to look for a job, become an expert, um, have a strong headline, get noticed, include keywords, um, take advantage of student profile sections if you are a recent college grad, um, talk about all your relevant experiences, build your network, ask your network for help, find ins where you wanna work, search the job portals. Um, you know, I'll tell you, Oftentimes we post a lot of our job openings on LinkedIn and I feel like that's where I find the most success. People that see the job posting on LinkedIn and then essentially from there go to our career site to apply. Um, and from there, you know, I'm also leveraging LinkedIn just to look for candidates. So I use keywords and phrases. So, you know, make sure the titles in your profile match. If there's a particular job that you're looking for, make sure the titles match so that you maybe will get found. Um, you know, oftentimes the unicorns don't just blindly apply to our career sites. So we go out and seek the talent. Um, and so anything in your profile that essentially can match what jobs, you know, you're seeking will only help you be more, um, you'll get noticed by recruiters. Um, let's see. So there's a tidbit that 70% of jobs are found through networking. Um, so once you start networking, um, Send customized messages, um, you know, ask for advice, ask for informational interviews. Um, let's see. Don't be afraid to reach out directly to a recruiter either. Um, I think I touched upon this earlier, but, you know, one strategy is to first apply to the position and then reach out to the recruiter or just send the resume directly. Um, because I can't tell you how many 
how many resumes we have to go through through the applicant tracking system. And so any way that you can get noticed and in my face and I, you know, take a, the opportunity to look at your resume, I, I, I feel like be direct through LinkedIn because you'll definitely get noticed. So as you kind of prepare for the interview, um, you know, these are kind of self-explanatory, but always try to arrive early, um, you know, dress to impress, um, you know, bringing your resume. Nowadays, I feel like most of the interviews are in a virtual space. Um, so oftentimes you don't need to obviously bring your resume anymore. Do your homework on the company. You know, as a recruiter, I typically send interview agenda guides to our candidates and I give them the names and titles um, of the interview team. So look up, you know, look up the folks that you're going to be meeting with on LinkedIn, you know, get an understanding where they went to school, know their background so that you can bring up, um, you know, things in conversation. Um, be sure to make eye contact, even if you are in a virtual space. Um, sit up straight, be attentive, and follow up. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of feedback from candidates that interviews and in more of the virtual space is a bit more relaxed. Um, you know, I think it allows candidates to feel more at ease. Um, and, you know, but I always say dress like you're going into the office. Like, even though it's through your computer, put on that jacket or put on a nice, you know, suit just to, because you do want to impress even if you're in a virtual space. So interviews. So we, we typically use an interview guide at Valvoline. Um, and you know how you can kind of better prepare for interviews. Um, here's kind of a list of questions that you can typically expect in an interview. You know, what can you share about your background and your work experience? So obviously, you know, you'll be able to articulate your own experiences. Um, you know, be able to answer, how do you feel your background is what we're looking for? Um, you know, why are you interested in this company? I always ask, you know, what piqued your interest in this opportunity? You know, why Valvoline? Um, you know, oftentimes, sometimes I have to pull it out of candidates, but I love to hear like, you know, I'm a car enthusiast. I, you know, I have an affinity for race car driving. I mean, anything that you can kind of personalize, um, you know, I think just adds kind of another element to why you really want the job. Um, you know, what can you uniquely bring to this position? I mean, I love to just get a sense that people are hungry. Um, you know, people are humble. Um, and people are team players. I mean, that's what we look for. You know, a lot of things can be taught. A lot of, you know, requirements in a role, you can be trained. Um, but a lot of those innate virtues, I don't think you can be taught. Those are kind of in you. So, um, you know, anything that you can kind of share that kind of shows, you know, the interviewer what your virtues are, um, I think will help position you for success. Um, and then preparing a checklist, uh, prepare to show hiring managers how your expertise, personality, and skills add up to a huge career potential and map to the job description. You know, the other thing to kind of call out, yes, you're interviewing for a particular job, but we're always assessing folks just kind of on the longevity. Like what's their, we, we say, what's the Valvoline runway? Like just because we're hiring you for this role, where can we see you, you know, develop and grow after two, three years? Um, so oftentimes we're not just assessing candidate for the role that they're, they're applying to, but just even kind of what's their career progression. Um, and then I shared research your interviews on LinkedIn so you can get a sense of their background and maybe have some talking points during the, the interview. Um, you know, we've got a, a, a LinkedIn company page, which is a great resource, but do your homework, you know, know who the CEO is, know when they were founded, um, just, you know, if they've had any, you know, recent press releases, just kind of read up so that you're educated um, before your interview. 
So we use, we do a lot of behavioral type questions at Babylene. So depending on the level of the role, we have interview guides. Um, you know, we've got nine core competencies that we typically assess in our candidates. And you say nine, I mean, that seems like a lot. <laughs> um, but, you know, we typically have a first round interview and then a second round interview where it's a larger panel. We maybe pair up some interviewers so that they can assess the competencies. Um, but we've learned, you know, past behavior truly does predict future behavior. So a lot of the questions are more um, behavioral based. Um, you know, they're, they're typically set in the past tense. Um, you know, just be prepared to kind of have examples, you know, both positive and negative, because sometimes they want to, will want to ask you, you know, to share a time that maybe wasn't as positive. Um, and focus on the most important behaviors to the job. So just some examples of questions, um, you know, tell me about a time when you had several tasks to complete at once, what did you do? Um, walk me through an event in your past when you went above and beyond to meet a customer's expectation. Um, you know, a lot of the questions are honing in on customer service experience, you know, managing your time. Um, are you adaptable? I mean, you, you, you definitely, no day is ever the same in a job. So you've got to be able to manage your work and be flexible. Um, you know, there'll also probably be some competency questions around just collaboration. Um, and then if it's a manager role, they'll probably hone in on leadership capabilities. Um, so like I said, we've got nine competencies. So, you know, you'll probably get asked a variety of, of types of questions. This is a neat little um, snapshot that we actually share with our candidates in an interview agenda email um, just to kind of help them prepare. Um, so, you know, situation or task. Um, be prepared to kind of describe the situation that you were in, um, and you must describe a specific event. Um, you know, they want to hear descriptive. They, they don't want it to be broad, um, but they just, the situation can be from a previous job or from a volunteer experience or any relevant event. Um, and then they'll want to kind of hone in on the action that you took. Um, so describe the action. Um, keep the focus on you, even if you're discussing a group project, um, you know, describe what you did, what your role was in, in the action, not the efforts of the team. Um, don't tell what you think you might do, but tell them what you did. Um, and then they'll really want to hear the results. They'll want to know, you know, after the action, what results did you achieve? So what happened? How did the event end? Um, what did you accomplish? And what did you learn? So here's a little example. Tell me about a time when you had to mediate a conflict. So identifying the star. So the candidate should ask, I was part of the team working on a complex project. When the project fell behind schedule, everyone started blaming someone else. I called a meeting and by focusing on the facts, I persuaded the team that we needed to stop attacking each other and address the issues that, we, that were stalling the project. When we focused on those issues, we came up with a plan that rescued the project and we completed it on time. So the situation was they were part of a team working on a complex project. And when it fell behind, they started blaming everyone. And then the action, obviously, they called a meeting. And by focusing on the facts, they persuaded the team that they needed to stop attacking each other and address the issues that were stalling the project. And then what was the result? They focused on those issues and they came up with a plan that rescued the project and they completed it on time. And this is just kind of a list of common behavioral interview type questions. You know, maybe you've been asked some of these before, um, you know, give an example of a goal you reached and tell me how you achieved it. Give an example of a goal you didn't meet and how you handled it. Um, you know, describe a stressful situation at work and how you handled it. 
Have you had to convince a team to work on a project they weren't thrilled about? How did you do it? You know, are you persuasive? Um, you know, they're kind of assessing all, all of your answers based on those competencies. Um, have you been in a situation where you didn't have enough work to do? Have you ever made a mistake and how did you handle it? That's a good one. Kind of just shows your adversity. And then, you know, if you're humble and can own up to making a mistake, um, describe a decision you made that was unpopular and how you handled implementing it. So once you get through the interview, um, the thank you note is not dead. Now, I feel like in today's world, the mail system is a little unreliable. People don't really send personalized snail mail anymore. Um, I'm probably old school. I still send birthday cards. Um, but, you know, send a personal note, whether that be email or via snail mail. Um, I really do feel like it goes a long way. I've actually had hiring managers comment when a candidate didn't send follow-up um, thank yous. And so... Um, definitely still send thank you emails. Um, you know, you can write a quick recap, you know, just kind of highlighting some of your skills um, or clarifying anything if, if, you know, if they express any concerns. Um, but keep it concise. You know, it, this says more than, no more than a few paragraphs, but I think it doesn't need to be more than, you know, two, two paragraphs. Um, you know, reiterate why you want the job. I mean, they want to hear why you want this opportunity. Um, and then just be authentic. You know, we're looking, you know, for unique candidates. Um, and so anything you can do to just kind of convey who you are helps your cause. Um, you know, it's a candidate market right now. So I always tell hiring managers, you know, we're interviewing candidates just just as much as candidates are interviewing us, but um, definitely, you know, follow, do send a personal uh, follow-up. I think that goes a long way. So like I mentioned at the beginning, we've got a ton of opportunity right now at Valvoline. Our career site is uh, jobs.valvoline.com. Um, you know, if you're in the supply chain sector right now, we are, we are hiring like crazy in our supply chain groups. Um, so if interested, check out our career site um, and, you know, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, that's kind of high level overview. So any questions? We good. Thank you. All right, many thanks, Monica, for sharing your expertise and words of wisdom with us. I didn't see any questions in the chat for her, did you? Okay. All right, let's continue with our program. Employers with active job leads are always welcome to share those leads with our community. If you have an active job lead and you're in the online group, use the raise hand feature now. We'll watch for that and promote you up to a panelist. I'm not seeing any employers in the in-person audience. Christy, anyone with that on, hand up online? Okay. All right, wonderful. Watching for that. Should be on the attendee side on the top. I think we're okay. Feel free to share job leads in the chat as well. For those of you that are actively job seeking, watch your email this afternoon. We get a ton of job leads emailed in between job club sessions. We often post those onto our LinkedIn group, which we shared into the chat earlier. Um, but we do spend a great deal of time compiling that newsletter that goes out after lunch. If there are other employers on the call and you want to coach to email us with your job leads, UK alumni career at uky.edu, do that before lunch and we'll make sure that those are also included in the newsletter this afternoon. Okay, quick updates from our program facilitators. Um, please note, County Cooperative Extension always has wonderful programming and they have a great listing of programs for the summer. So be sure to check that out online. We'll share the group, um, the chat in the, in the group. Diana, any special programs you want me to include? I'll just speak locally as well. Okay, yep. yep, locally throughout the state. Be sure to check with your unique county extension. There's 120 offices throughout the state and they, they all offer incredible programming. 
um, updates from UK Steps. Steps continues to hire a significant number of employees into UK. Steps is UK's temporary employment unit. And of course, Nicole Waite is our partner um, for Job Club and on the facilitator side. Um, website is right there online, and we'll also share that in the chat. If you're looking to get on at UK, Steps is a great way to get started. Um, many of us started their career through Steps. I, I did as well. Lastly, UK Alumni Career Services. Um, of course, we're taking clients if you're in need of job seeker support or if you're looking to change uh, career fields and looking for some additional support in that way too. Um, you can learn more about our services at ukalumni.net forward slash career. Okay, up next at Job Club, May 24th, Insider Secrets, what recruiters want to see on your resume, presented by Lisa James, Senior Vice President um, of Robert Half in, in Accounting. She's presented for us before and always gives a great presentation. So looking forward to seeing you again on May the 24th. Jot that down on your calendar. We'll share the registration link into the chat here. On behalf of the UK Alumni Association, Fit County Cooperative Extension, and UK HR Steps Temporary Employment, thank you for joining Job Club today and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.